as a red, white, and blue blooded American, nothing lets me unwind more than a packet of good old Limpwood Lil Dingies. Boy, oh boy, did they put the mind at ease during those tense evenings. Those days where I've been nagged to death by the ball and chain, or used up all my energy preparing for a wedding between my daughter and a man three times her age. Either way, my God-fearing soul is quite the sounder with a cigarette between my teeth, no matter the situation. In fact, I love them so much, I want to immerse myself in them everywhere I go. Which got me thinking. Which got me thinking. What about smoking in video games? If you think about it, smoking, whether that be smoking tobacco or someone else, has been a prominent part of our culture for quite some time. From gentlemen smoking pipes in the 1500s, to year 7s vaping in the school bathrooms, it's clear that we as a population yearn to inhale anything other than that dastardly oxygen. In fact, in 1963, it's estimated that over 70% of men and 40% of women in the UK were active smokers. As a result, you think that such a popular cultural activity would be very much present in our contemporary media, namely video games. But I bought Street Fighter 6 recently, and it doesn't matter how many different combos Kami has, none of them involve her whipping out a pack of Marlboro. I honestly think it's kind of an underrepresented part of life when it comes to video games. As much as a lot of game worlds strive for realism and considering how much money the smoking industry makes, I'm surprised devs hadn't had a little more fun playing around with mechanics focused around these kinds of substances. Now obviously, I know why smoking isn't everywhere in video games. Not only have the rates for smoking gone down throughout the decades, other than the year 7s in the bathrooms, but also, well, I don't know if you know this, but smoking is actually bad for you. And the idea is that excluding representations of smoking might prevent a game's audience, children, from picking up such a bad habit. But of course, that links to the wider debate around depicting anything negative in video games. There are people out there who are convinced that video games cause violent tendencies in their young players, despite the data suggesting otherwise. Although admittedly, it's not quite the same considering, you know, tobacco is very easily obtainable and is legal, as opposed to first degree murder. But long story short, drugs equal a higher rating from Peggy, resulting in a narrowed target audience and ultimately resulting in less sales for the developers. No, instead, depictions of smoking are more so saved for either period pieces with the old timey setting with the old timey music, or a specific character that has smoking as one of their kind of defining characteristics. But if we're thinking beyond character, what role does smoking play gameplay wise? Do you gotta smoke? Got gum. The game that gave me the idea to make this video in the first place is Rockstar's very own Red Dead Redemption 2. And as much as Rockstar hates their own games, you can't say that they don't put effort into the little details. Being a rootin' tootin' adventure in the Old West, naturally, a lot of the characters do naughty things like drinking, fighting, and most importantly, smoking. Dutch in particular is almost always seen with something in his hands when you're chilling at camp. And it's not just Dutch who gets to have all the fun. In fact, there exist three different ways to light on up as you live your cowboy fantasy. There's your standard cigarette, premium cigarettes, as well as those big bad cigars. I actually think this is a really cool addition to the game. After all, Red Dead Redemption has always acted as kind of like a cowboy simulator, and the presence of different smoking instruments, all denoting different levels of class or wealth, allows the player to further immerse themselves into the world they're presented with. Maybe you're going for a high on a playthrough, choosing to uphold your image by only indulging in the premium cigarettes or the cigars. On the other side of the coin, you might be going for a low on a playthrough, in which you play as no more than the scum of the earth. Maybe you'd even go so far as to ignore your fellow gang members when they say hi, and only smoke the basic pack to reflect what an irredeemable bastard you are. In terms of its effect on gameplay, each different item makes different changes to your character's cores. While all three essentially do the same thing, increase your dead eye and decrease your stamina, the cigar being richer and more, I don't know, tobacco-y, <laughs> refills more of your dead eye compared to the cigarettes. Yes, it's more or less useless, especially when you realise that there are items that fill all your cores without any detriments, but it's cool, okay? I look fucking awesome! Funnily enough, it seems as if Arthur only manages to take one singular puff before just dropping that puppy on the ground. Either he's a slightly confused recovering addict, or, more likely, the devs made this animation shorter in order to avoid allegations of encouraging smoking. In researching this video, I found that you can indeed smoke for longer, but only in Rockstar's disease-ridden, abandoned child, also known as Red Dead Online. 
where Fortnite has emotes emulating TikTok dancers and sexual encounters, Red Dead Online allows you to paint your lungs with tar to your heart's content. Which, if you think about it, is very, very strange. If you wanted to make smoking look less cool by making the animation shorter, why this extended emote? Honestly, it should make more sense not to include the emote at all, considering that in Red Dead Online, you're not playing as Arthur or John, you're playing as you. Instead of little 12 year old Timmy watching Arthur, a grown man smoke, he's watching his virtual cowboy counterpart. Like I said, cool as fuck. Cool. You don't understand. If you don't stop hitting the gritty, the walkers are gonna come right to us. Another game that I've played as a recent has been The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, a game that theoretically should be perfect for me. I'm a big fan of VR as well as survival horror games. Despite this match made in heaven, I can't play it that often because it's the one VR game that, for some reason, just wrecks my insides and tightens my throat. And not in the good way. If you're familiar with the survival horror genre, you'll know that a lot of games have a focus on inventory management and expendable items, and Saints and Sinners is no different. With one of those items being cigarettes. Obviously being in VR, item management is a lot more hands-on as opposed to something like Resident Evil 4, with you actually having to first find a packet out in the overworld, lift up the little lid, and pull them out individually. Now if you're an anxious parent of a kid who likes VR, I suggest you look away now. You can put them up to your mouth and it'll automatically stick between your character's teeth. From here you need to use a different item that you find around the overworld, the lighter. Hold it up to the cigarette. Yippee! From then on, it'll slowly burn with smoke emitting from it whether you hold it in your mouth or take it out onto your fingers. I tell you, I must have some sort of deep-rooted predisposition for addiction because despite this being fictional, I cannot stop smoking. Is it this cool in real life? I, I wouldn't know. Something about the misty clouds over my head, corpses to my side with the only heat to warm my sorrow bones being the heat off of one of these bad boys just makes everything seem so tragic. What's more tragic, however, is how little this affects actual gameplay. While the steps the player must perform to actually start smoking are really cool and creative, the mechanics surrounding it are rather lackluster. Despite having a stamina bar, one that slowly decreases in max capacity unless you eat food, you can have the cleanest lungs in the land or be a serial chain smoker, and this bar will be none the wiser. I don't understand how they missed on an opportunity to do something with this. Maybe they could temporarily slow down your need for food considering nicotine does actually suppress a person's appetite. As a trade-off, maybe the stamina bar goes from max to zero faster as smoking also decreases a person's lung capacity. Especially with how abundant these cigarettes are around the world, combined with what little precious space your poor backpack holds, to me it just seems like kind of a no-brainer. Bioshock, the game that requires you to have a degree in politics to talk about it in any capacity. Classical liberalism, objectivism, sesquipedalianism, it's a first person shooter, that joke is really funny, if you know what that word means. What I'm trying to say is, there's no fundamental difference between Bioshock and Doom. Come on. Actually, I tell a lie, it features one core difference. Can you tell what it is? Cigarettes. Bioshock has cigarettes. You take the cigarettes away, they become indistinguishable. One aspect of Bioshock that immediately sets itself apart from other games in the FPS genre is its aesthetics. Set in the year 1960, the city of Rapture, where the game is set, prides itself on individual freedom and the ability to prosper by means of your own hard work. <laughs> As a result, the in-game cigarette companies use advertising that fit the 1960s vibe. Stuff like this, and this, and my personal favourite, this. In fact, the inclusion of such luxuries like cigarettes and cigars actually contributes to the narrative quite nicely. As you enter Rapture, the booming, disembodied voice of Andrew Ryan, its creator, proudly exclaims that here, there are no gods or kings, only man. Implying that this is supposed to be a land of equality and harmony. Despite this notion, the slimy tentacles of Class Divide wriggle their ways into this underwater paradise, with one brand, Nicotime, being of noticeably lower quality compared to their competitors, Oxford Club. This is because they were supposedly made up of fish eggs and seashells, something abundant underwater as opposed to the tobacco that Rapture had to grow. Because of this difference, this difference in price, Oxford Club became rather exclusive, as evidence from one of their advertisements. For discriminating tastes? Bit on the nose, no? Oxford Club. It's a tiny detail that you'll never pay attention to, but I think it's neat nonetheless. Much like in Red Dead, the cigarettes in Bioshock provide a little bit of a trade-off in terms of the player's core stats. 
Smoking a cigarette will chip off your health ever so slightly in exchange for a bit of Eve, which is essentially just evil wizard heroin that lets you do cool party tricks. What's slightly disappointing is that their inclusion as an item doesn't do a lot to impress. In all my research, I couldn't find a connection between the cigarettes of Rapture and the rules the game lays out about Eve. Why do cigarettes increase your Eve? In Red Dead, you can connect the dots of logic and realise that, yeah, it makes sense, Arthur aimed gooder and he run badder. In Bioshock, there's no such link other than Eve and cigarettes are both stimulants? Not only that, but this is the only game on the list that outright doesn't include a smoking animation. You click on it and just automatically inhale the whole packet like a nicotine addicted, emotionally traumatised version of Kirby. But then again, it helps serve the narrative, which is a priority in this narrative game, so I'll let this one slide. Are you smoking? Yeah, so what? Last, but certainly not least, and without a doubt one of the most iconic game series to commonly feature both cigarettes and cigars, is the Metal Gear Solid franchise. Stemming all the way from the original Metal Gear on the MSX2 to Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain on PS4 and Xbox One, smoking has always been not only an iconic part of the character's aesthetics, but also a mainstay as a mechanic as well. Bearing in mind, this is the only entry on the list where I'm referring to the whole franchise, not a specific game. So if I get some information wrong, I apologise. Kojima seems to take pleasure in making this franchise as cryptic and nonsensical as possible for a new fan like me. What I can appreciate, however, are his concerns over safety and worries of romanticising smoking. Whether it's Solid Snake and his cigarettes or Big Boss and his cigars, the item description never fails to include a warning about the dangers of smoking, usually some variation of highly addictive and hazardous to your health. While it's not quite groundbreaking in its attempts to quell the rates of smoking, I like the little fourth wall break in saying that it's hazardous to your health rather than their health. Crime, it's the way I fly. Sometimes, the games even go above and beyond by having the other characters scold Solid Snake and Big Boss for smoking during an espionage mission. Didn't you know that cigarettes contain benzopyrene, a chemical that leads to lung cancer? Which I think is a perfectly valid complaint, but... Oh no, I guess I just don't oh, no, know how good a cigarette tastes in the morning, so fuck me, I guess. Seriously, smoking is everywhere in this series. The loading screen for MGS4 is literally just Snake chilling in the void, puffing out toxins into the player's face. It's quite clear that Kojima got a little bit of cold feet when he saw this, as one of the little tidbits that appears reads, <clears throat> Smoking warning, cigarette smoke has detrimental effects to you and those around you, particularly infants, children and the elderly. Pussy talk, I say. MGS4 especially seems to take it really, really far, with the inclusion of Snake Cigarette actually supposedly acting as a key part of the narrative subtext. Being the last main title in the series' timeline, the cigarette acts as a symbol for Snake as an idea and the legacy that he upholds. Whenever someone lights one for him, they're doing their best to bring back the hope that a younger Snake would bring. During one of his final conversations with another character, he refuses an offer to smoke, symbolising how, much like his addiction, his mission, his identity as Solid Snake, has ended. Damn, I... Didn't know these games were so deep. Hey, how are those ports coming along? Man. Now, unlike the game's ideology towards smoking, the mechanics around cigarettes and cigars vary from game to game. Some of these uses include calming Snake's nerves so he can use a paraglider, slowly depleting Snake's health, letting you listen to the in-game soundtrack, detecting infrared security beams, steadying Snake's aim, removing leeches stuck on Big Boss's body, driving away hornets, lighting up dark areas, replenishing Snake's psych, whatever that means, and reducing stress during an alert. It's clearly evident that they've come quite a long way. The funniest comparison has to be between the earliest game in the series versus the latest. In the original Metal Gear, the cigarette packet you get is entirely useless throughout the entire game until right at the end where it gives you extra time to complete the final mission and even then you can beat it without even knowing of its existence. Compare that to Metal Gear Solid 5, in which Big Boss smokes his phantom cigar. And watch as the fabric of space and time crumbles around you in real time. The fuck is in this shit?